Hey guys, it's Isabel, and I just found something incredibly spooky. The house of the famous author Washington Irving in Liverpool, England. Washington Irving lived there for 17 years while he was in Europe and spent many of his years close to death. There were many times when he could not walk and all he could do was write stories like Bracebridge Hall and Tales of a Traveler, one of his favorite works. It was said that part of him died in that house, and a legend has it that his spirit still lingers, writing new stories. I did a project on Washington Irving in high school and my teacher loved it, so I'm pretty excited to go out and actually be where he lived. I'll be arriving tomorrow morning to check it out. Okay. Okay guys, I just picked up Joey in Liverpool and now we're heading to the abandoned house of Washington Irving. Hey guys, it's Joey. Uh, it is said that the house it showed up in a couple of his short stories. Since the house practically radiates a creepy vibe, it probably gave him inspiration for the house in his short story the adventures of my aunt okay so before we arrive at the house i want to share some background information with you guys washington irving was born on april 3rd 1783 in new york and he was the youngest and favorite out of 11 children he was originally going to be a lawyer but ever since childhood he always had been interested in the world of writing so his books gained so once his books gained popularity giving him a stable salary he decided to fully commit to writing some of his most famous works are The Legend of Sleepy Hollow and Rip Van Winkle, which are also known to be the first American short stories. Yeah, interesting fact about him. While he was studying to become a lawyer, he fell in love with Matilda Hoffman, but she died young due to tuberculosis. Due to her death, Irving was in a massive state of devastation, and he stopped writing temporarily. Her death actually may have had something to do with how in many of his short stories the characters are often characterized as lonely and individualized because he probably felt lonely after his lover's death and expressed it through his writing. I guess you could say a motif within his works is the concept of loneliness. For example, in The Adventures of My Aunt, the aunt is a widow who had lost her husband due to sickness just like how Irving lost his lover due to tuberculosis. And the house described in that story also symbolized the emptiness of losing a loved one. Another is Rip Van Winkle, where the main character falls asleep for 20 years and finds out that his wife and friend had died and his children grew up, leaving him completely lonely in the new world. Yeah, and his style is also very unique. He writes a lot of stories that kind of give off a suspenseful and mysterious mood with a setting always in an eerie place, but his tone is always humorous. He's written a lot of creepy stories, so there's got to be something in his house worth discovering. Legend also has it that he predicted his own death, and his last words were, Well, I must arrange my pillows for another night, if this could only end. Alright, so we've arrived at the house, and it definitely has some creepy vibe to it. I'm really excited. Let's go check it out. There are multiple themes within his stories because there are so many ways to interpret it. Many people inter interpret his stories historically because they often incorporate history into his work. For example, many people believe that the main theme of Rip Van Winkle is about the American Revolution and how the country changed. And the conflicts he writes about are usually related to the supernatural, probably because he keeps it mysterious. By describing the setting of the story so vividly with imagery and including the supernatural, Irving definitely proves himself to be a romanticist author. Okay, so we've arrived at the door. Let's hope it's unlocked. Whoa! Okay, so I have no idea why, but I haven't even gotten the camera to work in like an hour, and it, me and Isabel have just been walking around the house looking for any artifacts or something. She's in a, another room right now, but I finally got the camera to work. I, op I found this chest. In the chest, I found a portrait. And as you can see in the portrait, just like in the adventures of my aunt, the eye is cut out. So that makes me wonder, like, maybe his stories weren't just imagination. Like, they could have happened. If it's true, I gotta wonder if he was experiencing a human perspective or like a supernatural perspective. Because he writes so much about the supernatural. <laughs> And he gets so creative with it. Like he, it's almost like he knows it from experience. <laughs> Could it be that he is the supernatural? Does he write his stories based on what he does to humans? 
and is the reason why his tone is humorous because he finds that messing with people are funny? Most of his stories are historically accurate. What is going on? Guys, something doesn't feel right. I think we need to get out of here. What the?